Welcome, adventurers. Today, we're going to turn all this stuff into this thing. It's my attempt at some sort of apocalyptic war wagon slash cargo hauler thing. I started with this $15 John Deere tractor trailer combo and fully disassembled it. Taking the wheels off was a royal pain. And oddly enough, I got it just for the wheels. So I got these uh, kind of tube sets. I'll link them in the episode description so you can find them more easily since somebody recently asked about that and decided that I would use them for the axle mounting points. Now these sections are a little long. I figured I wanted to have them pretty flush as you see there. So I'm going to take a sharpie and I find here off to the side underneath the knife and I'm going to mark them. And then I'm going to take my saw, cut them down, and get a good length on them. Use a little uh, plastic adhesive because it actually works on these. Stick them together, good and snug, and find out that the plastic adhesive doesn't work between the pipes and the wheels. So I use super glue and a little baking soda to set them in place. Unfortunately, that is not enough. So I had to use uh, quite a bit of hot glue. I just kind of filled the wheel wells with hot glue. Here I'm gluing in the inserts from adult beverage bottles. Jameson whiskey, in case you're wondering. And here, these are lids from Steri-Cups. So I've used them before in a previous video. Well, I've used the Steri-Cups, not the lids, but I thought they looked very interesting. Now here I'm cutting some XPS foam to make the chassis. It's where the wheels will actually connect to the overall vehicle. I've got a section for the rear and a section for the front. The shorter section is for the front. And now I need a deck to attach it all to. So I cut off a uh, half inch section, roughly five inches wide by about six inches long. Now that white thing is a tray that ground turkey comes into, or comes in. I uh, make my dog's food from scratch because I can apparently. And uh, I get a lot of these trays. And I thought they'd be a great idea. They've got some interesting texture. They look a little sci-fi. -y. Here I'm marking out where I want the wheels to connect. Using the pencil at an inch and an eighth, I poke in a, uh, a little spot using another one of those pipes. I mark it. And then with the hot wire, I melt out the foam. It gives a nice receptacle for the tubes to go into for mounting later. And here I just round out the hole a little more using that same piece of tube. There I'm kind of test fitting things just to see how they look. And at this moment I'm really happy with my results. I'm like, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be great. But it's not. Now the lower parts of the chassis, since there are two parts I bevel off on all sides, and I just arbitrary angle. It's actually a leftover angle for my last build. And then the upper platforms where it actually connects to the build portion where the action will take place. I only bevel the sides that will be visible from the outer edges where the wheels connect. Using construction adhesive, I glue those pieces together and also put some in the holes to hold the uh, axles and wheel connectors in place. Here I've trimmed down that turkey tray. I'm melting some just regular old polystyrene rod to make kind of a covered truck situation. These are the uh, Final Faction accessory kits. There's a lot of neat little parts in there and I ultimately kind of kit bashed them together into some gun emplacements. Here's a like a rocket propelled grappling chain thing for snagging enemy vehicles off the highway or the wastelands of the ash waste. Here I make like a missile pod and a, and a mobile gun turret thing and discover that no matter how much super glue you use on these little turkey trays, nothing sticks to them permanently. I've sanded these and still the super glue did not stick. So if you'd like to see me waste time on plastic parts, you should definitely hit the subscribe button and the notification icon. And of course, like this video if you like seeing me waste my time so you don't have to. Here I've uh, reverted to square one by 
making a deck, cutting off one inch sections to glue in place, taping them up. This is going to be the new section that the white plasticky turkey tray was going to take the place of. Here's a little piece of uh, shish kebab skewer and some longer ones because I wanted the pointy bits. And it's going to ultimately be a canopy over where the, uh, the soldiers or whatever will sit. Here's some corrugated paper, cutting off some random chunks. These are going to represent corrugated iron or corrugated uh, sheeting. Here I uh, use a pencil and poke some holes in, kind of represent rust holes, bullet holes. Uh, poke in some larger holes. I use my X-Acto knife as well to cut in some gouges. I set it over that frame that I built and glued together and then bent it down to create some seemingly natural looking creases in the corrugated. Here I'm expanding that cut I made with the knife using the pencil. And if you want to see how I make tarps, you should definitely check out a previous video, which I'll link in this uh, area of how to make uh, tarps on various things. So I want to make the front of this look like some sort of repurposed either military or construction vehicle. And this is the kind of thing that I was using as my reference image. You can find these all over the place. They're a military transport vehicle. It's basically a semi that the military uses. So utilizing that as a base of my idea, I uh, create a cab for this post-apocalyptic war machine. And of course, glue all those little pieces together. F fiddly e a bit. Eileen's tacky glue actually works really well with this stuff. It adheres almost immediately. Here I cut out the windscreen area. Test fit. I think it looks pretty good. It's about half a centimeter for the framing around that so I can have big large windows. Glue those in place and then kind of an over cab deck area because I wanted places for minis to be able to stand. Here's a piece of the cut off foam from Framing things out, I'm going to use it to make the dash and uh, slide it over into place. I'm going to take another piece and cut it and put it onto the right hand side. And here I take another piece of the uh, dowel rod, in this case, shish kebab skewer, and a cog shaped button and glue it onto the end with super glue for a steering wheel. Here I'm adding some just random armor plate looking things or reinforcements or repairs. A little granny grating for the windshield there. Some more shish bob skewers to replace uh, a missing window there. As you can see little rectangular cardboard pieces. A little bit more of the corrugated to add some interest to the sides. Here I'm making some railing using some matchsticks. Super glued in place. I'm going to glue some things to that here in just a minute. Some plating, some more granny grating, even some chain to make it look a little more interesting. And so here I'm going to actually attach another piece of the uh, medium density chipboard or Wylock board, as it's commonly known, at least in this realm of YouTube. Let's super glue that in place. Just like that. Here I'm going to attach the chain. This is the cheap chain that I've been using for well, since my scatter terrain video. Uh, it was like six bucks for the roll and it'll probably last me quite a lot of builds. But super glue right onto the top of that post. And there we go. Little adhesive uh, accelerator there for the CA glue. And then I'm going to wrap it around this next post, making sure to leave a dip in it. I want it to look like this chain is is not taut, but loosely hanging and hooked to something on this post. Like it's been welded haphazardly in place. Here I'm using some more super glue and granny grating again, thanks to the indemitable Y-lock. Let's slap that in place. Again, more super glue accelerant. And then I was not happy with how square everything was, so I kind of just cut off some edges like this thing has been through the stuff, you know? 
It's seen a battle or two. It's been damaged. Pieces of metal have been broken off or shot off or cut off for whatever reason. And now I want to add some rivets. Now these are some really cheap little sequin type beads I found at Walmart. I probably have 10 million of them now. And using the X-Acto knife, poke it and uh, slide it off right into the super glue to give me a nice rivet effect when it's all said and done. Now here's where I figured out that I made some mistakes. The Gorilla Glue worked pretty well in a lot of places but not completely so I decided I'm gonna make an entire actual drivetrain and since I don't want to completely rebuild this bring out the old hot wire cut out channels to put that frame that I just showed you in it's pretty simple to do you could also use a knife to do this because I actually did in some instances because I did this to the front and the back of this build gouge it out with my hook shaped hot wire to make sure that it had plenty of depth hot glue and I cut a piece of cheap chipboard to cover the whole area so that it actually looks not like crap because I mean what would be the point of watching if it did this is EVA foam that I cut little holes out to cover up all the uh, well obvious imperfections regular old model acetone adhesive to glue the wheels back into the frame that I just made and now I've got a deck that has wheels now these are tea bags I like tea I drink tea I make tea by the gallon sometimes and this is some cordage that I found at Michael's that I'm going to tie the bags up with cutting off the the ends so they look more like sacks like this is stuff these nomadic warriors have gathered tied it to the to the actual frame there this is a random 3d printed thing that I made a while back it's a uh, some sort of cargo container I'm gonna use it to connect the front and the back sections of the vehicle here with the hot wire I cut out a hole well I guess melt out a hole for the dowel rod to go into pretty straightforward there you could use a drill bit or anything you want we fill it with hot glue stick the dowel rod in and now the back section has a means by which to connect to the front section now there I've taken some more shish kebab skewers and some chain to give some interest to it I want this to have a real Mad Max you know Fury Road type of feel and now I've primed it all of course before I primed it I made sure to protect all the foam pieces with Mod Podge and black paint mixture added a lot of skulls because well I've never done that before and it sounded interesting to me and I wanted to make sure this thing had skulls on it because you know the apocalypse or something and there we go so let's start painting this I wanted to have this kind of sandy beige color again like my reference photo because this is a modified vehicle that's been turned into some road warrior-esque war machine and so I do a couple of coats of that because it's a pretty translucent paint it doesn't have the opacity that you might expect from a tan or a beige now I'm going to take a rusty deep brown color and cover most of these metal plates with it all over the vehicle including the ladders then I'm going to take black and cover these spear looking things that the chains are hanging from as well as the chains and any other places that I felt would benefit from some black paint here I'm going to take some off-white and ultimately red and blue and dab it onto the corrugated sections because they are repurposed pieces of old corrugated metal to give it that worn you know post-apocalyptic feel because why not ultimately I think it looked out or it turned out pretty awesome looking but here you're dabbing it on you want to be more towards the center less as you get towards the edges because that's what's really going to make it look like worn metal and of course varying the colors really helps I used like a teal blue this vanilla color and a kind of a deep red now I've got this reddish orange rust from model air and I've got two different tones of that a deeper orange and then a lighter orange I'm going to dab onto various metal plates here to enhance the rust look of them obviously you want to make sure that you're 
old metal plates look like old metal plates and the best way to do that is to make them look rusty of course I have model air paint you can use whatever reddish orange paints you want to mix up here's the lighter version of that that I dab more towards the center and sporadically in other areas as well because rust tends to be darker at its edges and lightest at its center point because that's the least oxidized point of any rusty area I do that all over in here I'm painting the goodie bags that are hanging from the cargo section of this vehicle and this is an off-white it's not the vanilla it's more of a cream color on screen it looks very white but it's actually not now I'm gonna take an asphalt kind of grayish black and paint all the wheels honestly you really can't tell the difference between that and the slate gray rust-oleum primer I used except it doesn't shine when it's done now here we take some black paint we're gonna dab it around the corners of the the actual vehicle itself showing where paint has shipped off revealing the futuristic metal underneath that doesn't really rust but it definitely adds to the this thing has been through hell and back kind of look now I'm gonna take some green okay a deep kind of green and paint that canvas the uh, shop towel actually with PVA glue and water to make it tarp but I'm gonna paint it a deep green and then come in with a little dirty down rust because this stuff is cool and hit some of the metal plates and the chain some of the posts and areas uh, it really adds a amazing effect to what I'm going for here is this old rusted metal look and here I'm using some cheap silver metallic to paint the headlights of this vehicle and those headlights were actually just small micro centrifuge tube caps any sort of a roundish shape will work here I'm using a uh, army painter skeleton bone color to paint all the skulls I know that's shocking skeleton bone for skulls now if this is the ash waste it's ashy right so a drop of dish solution there that's the uh, anti kind of streaking stuff a little bit of matte medium honestly the same golden brown I use for the base coat of the entire vehicle and some deep gray to make a gray wash now I know what you're thinking black wash is the only way to go but if you have a lot of ash somewhere you you're gonna have ash in your recesses not just black soot and whatnot and oil so this is the basics of it I make a gray colored sludge and I slather the whole vehicle in it wheels included because they're the ones that actually touching the, the ash wastes just like that then I'm gonna use some black wash in some select areas some of the flat areas will get it definitely the bags because the gray wash obviously wasn't enough contrast to show them out a little bit here and there to really bring out some divots I'm going to basically selectively highlight or edge highlight this tarp with a lighter green gray dry brush over most everything else to bring out its surfaces and show the contrast between the high and the low points and then a little metallic dry brush on the hubs of these wheels that clearly are used to grind other vehicles into the dust and of course that's about it let's see this thing in action and there she is my cargo eight bridge hauler or apocalyptic war rig or whatever you want to call it there it is ladders giant wheels that I also dry brush because it really brought out the grain in them and makes them look more worn dirty down rust on the hubs chains to hold the skulls in place because well, who doesn't like chains and skulls I mean that's just sci-fi cool now this thing was too big to fit on my turntable so obviously there's a lot of stills of it in various positions I want to make sure you could see the whole thing and in seeing the whole thing hopefully get a good idea you know those kit bash guns I made all I did was paint them flat black and then dry brush with a metallic silver that cheap craft mart paint 
I think they turned out really well and without gluing them down I can put them in whatever position I want or not load them out at all depending on how I want to use this rig in the future. I'm really proud of this particular build. I think the corrugated metal, the uh, cargo section, the upgraded armor plates, the skulls on spikes and chains, it all turned out exceedingly well. Uh, if you'd like to see more of something like this, I really would like to hear from you in the comments. Many of you have been commenting, and now I've got to start making stuff that you guys want to see. Thanks for putting the pressure on me. But in all seriousness, I really do appreciate your comments, your likes, and of course your subscribes. It helps me know what I need to do next and more of and improve on. I'm still working on my lighting. I, I tried to do some color correction on this one, and I hope it turns out. So you can see the dusty grays and the rusty reds and the greens and the blues and the tan. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this build. Here's my mobile weapons platforms there. I think they look pretty awesome, even though limited work. Well, thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.